As he prepares to leave office, the Globe has reported Governor Patrick is shifting 500 employees from managerial positions to a public employee union, in essence, tying the hands of the next governor, particularly if it's a person of the other party, and insulating them from removal. Either of you have a problem with what the governor did in the waning days of his administration? Martha, starting with you. First of all, I wasn't involved in that negotiation. No, I understand that. Yeah, and I, I don't know. I think the governor needs to be more transparent about what actually went happened. And until we have that what and why, uh, I think he needs to explain that. Are you troubled by what Deval Patrick did? Yeah, I am. 500 people out of a management workforce that's roughly 3,000 people. You're talking about almost one sixth of the managers in state government fact that it happened two weeks before an election and two months before the end of an administration. And so far, there's no publicly available explanation about what agencies are affected or how they're affected. But I, I mean, I worry a know, lot about what this... We need to know those facts. Well, back about transparency, about big dig financing, putting the financing, kicking that can down the road, being transparent about letting go 700 Department of Mental Health workers, outsourcing that as mental health. So I'm happy to stand on my record. I didn't have anything to do with that particular decision, but let's be transparent about our own records and the decisions we've made and the values that drive those decisions. That's what's at stake in this race. Uh, so I gotta say, the governor, uh, excuse Quickly, me, the attorney please. general has over a billion dollars of new spending of one type or another that she's already proposed. She's that's gonna have to untrue. figure out how to pay for it. Well, let, let me add a little speak, well, I think in order to move forward, we need to invest in this state. We need to invest in businesses. We need to invest in our kids. We need to invest in our workforce development because otherwise you're missing that equation. What Charlie has proposed is at least 300 million of tax cuts maybe 600 million according to the Boston Globe. So he says, well, I'll find that money somewhere, but that's okay, he'll find that money somewhere. He also talks about all the kinds of things that he wants to do now, including workforce development. So where does that money come from? I at least am saying, I know what my priorities are. Investing in kids, investing in schools, investing in roads and bridges is why I support the indexing of the gas tax. So if you had to raise taxes, uh, quoting you to yourself, what would those revenues be that wouldn't increase the burden on the middle class and low income uh, uh, residents? They would be taxes on people who are at the top two or how do you percent. do that? How do you do that? There's no graduated income tax in Massachusetts. Well, we, don't, we are exploring ways to do a more graduated income tax. Every four years, someone says they're not going to raise taxes on the middle class, all right? And we've been hearing that for seven years with one party rule on Beacon Hill. Gas tax, middle class. Sales tax, middle class. Satellite TV, middle class. Registry fees, middle class. Most of these tax increases, property taxes, fees for after school sports, all this stuff lands on the middle class. And uh, that's one of the reasons why I've said I'm not going to raise taxes, because I think the middle class feels strapped already. And the last thing they need is another four years of getting nickel and dimed again. Well, I'm, um, on the Hobby Lobby issue, I basically am guilty of wildly overthinking it. But I am pleased to say that I'm still the only candidate in the race who proposed a solution to that problem for women in Massachusetts by, increase, by proposing to increase funding, which I would do as governor in the family health line item at the Department of Public Health. Okay. I mean, I fully expect that if I say something dumb, Marjorie's, uh, uh, excuse me, Martha. <laughs> okay. Martha's okay. people Just don't are gonna, call me sweetheart. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> Martha, Martha's, Martha's people are going to let me have it, okay? Oh, okay. When you go home at night and speak to your spouse, drives you absolutely up the wall. What is it, Charlie? <laughs> that I care about numbers, and I don't care about people. That's the single biggest thing that drives me up the wall. For me, it's always been about people. And it bothers me that a guy who is pretty facile with math, which does matter when you're talking about a $38 billion budget, is somehow considered to be somebody who doesn't care about people. Well, so that's Martha. also what this debate is about, and that's what this race is about. And so I'll put my record up against yours. I'm not criticizing what you did. I just think it shows that when you are taking over Harvard Pilgrim, you do increase premiums, you do outsource mental health, and your salary goes up. I wouldn't make those choices, Charlie. We can debate about whether you're a good guy or not. I don't dispute that. It's about the values that drive your choices. Do you think that you can fix DCF without adding more money? Um, I actually supported the governor's proposal, which was a $30 million increase in the budget for DCF. But I also think there are management reforms that ought to be part of uh, what happens there. And I made a bunch of reform proposals when the, Jer um, when the Jeremiah Oliver case, that tragedy broke earlier this year. The Commonwealth had an opportunity to move toward fixing this four years ago when Children's Rights filed that case, which was a very compelling case against the department. And the Attorney General and the Governor chose not to move to fix that, but instead to fight it, 
was a problem. There were outside lawyers who were suing us with a one-size-fits-all solution. It wasn't the right solution for Massachusetts. I thought better use of that money to go into DCF. I do believe that we need to restructure the agency. I've had a plan for that since I've worked with that agency for 25 years. We have an agency that has a mission to protect kids, allegedly, but to keep families together. It's a mixed mandate. They don't do it right. And the pendulum swings. We leave kids in, we take them out. We need to change it. Why are you not asking the super PAC, Charlie Baker, and then Martha Coakley, please, I know I don't have formal power, please take that commercial off the air. I said at the time I didn't like the tone of the ad. I still don't like the tone so of the ad. So why don't you ask them to but take it down? she and I are still having a discussion about whether they made the right decision or not. And I think the proof with regard to that is the tragedies and the problems and the broken agency at the DCF became. So why can't you just do it. that instead of having that ad play that makes it seem like she's a slasher or something, one of those slasher films? <laughs> Nothing? Okay, fine. why aren't you asking that the ad about him be pulled in light of the fact that virtually everybody says, despite your criticisms, he led the saving of a Harvard Pilgrim? Well, but the facts in that ad are accurate. Premiums went up. Salary went up. That, that, is, that is the difference between those two ads. There's factual inaccuracies. I think that ad about DCF is heinous, not just about me, but suggesting that somehow I sat by while children were killed. That's, that's outrageous. But okay. this is a campaign, and I understand that. And unless, and I asked Charlie, and he wouldn't do it, unless we take the People's Pledge, there's no way to control these the ads. first negative ad of this race, okay, was run by a super PAC, but the same week they started running that negative ad against me, they gave thousands of dollars to the Attorney General through a campaign finance loophole. I mean, to some extent, um, she doesn't have any credibility on this issue, in my opinion. Yeah, Charlie, some critics have suggested he engaged in pay-to-play. He gave $10,000 to the New Jersey GOP uh, just seven months before General Catalyst, that's the investment firm where he's listed as an executive in residence, uh, received $15 million bucks from the state's pension fund. By the way, they recently sold that. Should voters be concerned about that? Charlie said he did nothing wrong legally or otherwise. Should voters be concerned about that? Yeah, Why? because he's under investigation now for a pay-to-play scheme. Those facts at least on their face indicate, at least from my point of view, uh, a reason to investigate. He's under investigation. He said under 33 different times he filed that he was a partner and employee of it. If that's the case, then he is in violation of the law. Would you use this opportunity now to urge Christie and his treasurer to disclose whatever their investigation is into your thing immediately prior to November 4th? Well, I certainly can't control whatever no, the state of New Jersey does. No, but would you ask them to do that? Well, they're, they're doing an investigation. I stay as far away from it as I possibly can get, which I think is appropriate. And they'll issue their report whenever they issue it. But I will say this. You know, Martha mentioned the fact that um, 33 times I pointed out the fact that I was working with General Catalyst. I've been completely transparent about this from the beginning. Can I just point out that there's only one person at this table who's actually paid a campaign violation fine, and that would be the Attorney General. I have been completely transparent when we have had errors that have been pointed out. We fixed them. It's not a fine. We reverted the money to where it should have gone, and I always have done that. That's the transparency. That's why I'm calling on you to release your employment contract. And thank you all for tuning in. Good night. Yeah. You can watch the coach.